Hey out there, welcome. So earlier today, I met with some family friends. They're looking to sell their house either now or in three years when they retire. They know that I buy houses. They know I'm a real estate investor. We had a transaction together about a year ago where I purchased a home that was in their family. And it may have been a record breaker as far as time frame. I think from the time we signed the contract to the funds being transferred to the seller, them, was like 19 days. So that's really fast with real estate. And I was really glad that I can help them out. And in the end, I made a profit on the house. Anyway, it was a win-win situation. And that's the only kind of deals I wanna do. Win-win situations. So when they called me up and asked me to come over and take a look at their house, what do I think it's worth now, as is? What kind of repairs would I do? Things like that. I'm always grateful for that. I love even talking about real estate. For somebody to take me into their house and, and show me their house, I love doing that. If any of you guys are looking, you can do the same thing. Now, I'm not the only one that's saying what I'm about to say. You could see this in the news, you could see it on Google, you get online, talk to your neighbors. This is a hot market, it's a seller's market. There's hard, hardly any inventory, there's hardly any houses for sale. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's got to be down below 50% of where it was a year or two ago. And things that come onto the market, as long as they're priced correctly, they sell within days. Not weeks, within days. I've been saying in previous videos that if you see a house for sale two, three weeks after it comes onto the market and there's no contract on it yet, then something's up with it. It's either overpriced or the repairs haven't been taken into consideration as a reflection of a lower price. That's the only reason why a house is not selling in today's market. That being said, if you want to throw your hat in the ring and sell your house today, you can get top dollar for your house. The catch is, if you have to buy another one, you'll be paying top dollar for the house. So this couple that I met with this morning are kind of in that position. You know, they want to, I think they want to sell the house now, get top dollar for it but they have three years to wait. So we went over a couple different things. I took a walk through the house and let me give you the gist of the property. Before I went out to meet with them, I had run some comps in the area. What's on the market, what's under contract, what recently sold in their neighborhood, in their neighborhood. So it's not like an exact science, but I'm pretty good at this stuff. It's five bedrooms and two baths, it's a big house. 2,340 square feet. Again, a nice size house. And this is a hot market. This is what I think I said to the couple. If I didn't, then I wanted to say this. From my estimates, or from my prediction, or what I would do purchasing this house, or, or if I was the homeowner going to list it, I'd list it for 399000 And my prediction is it would sell for over that. I think it would sell for about 420000 Now I got a little star up here, because that is... As is. When I say as is, any kind of necessary repairs in order to get a clean CO uh, for the transaction to go through, as is means you're going to be taking care of necessary repairs. I'll go into that in a second about what I think necessary or required repairs would be. Maybe spruce up the house a little bit with some neutral colors inside. And then, just like anybody else's house, if you came over to my house, you'd probably say, hey, listen, you gotta get rid of that big couch in the living room, make it look bigger. I'd probably say, you know, I say furniture removal, whether you wanna put some stuff into storage or move it into the detached two-car garage in order to create more space in the house. It's very modest repairs and, uh, and, and costs as far as out-of-pocket. So, so that's as is, Three ninety nine, and I think it would sell four hundred and twenty thousand. One of the things, or one of the questions that I have for myself when I walk into a house, whether it's this house or or a house that's in need of a lot of repairs, is does it make sense to renovate or update? And then there's like a balance in there. Like, do we do as is in order to get this price, or do we go all out? and do a complete renovation and then get top dollar? That's the question. So like I said previously, I only believe in doing win-win deals. 
I don't want to leave a transaction where the seller or the buyer on the other side leaves and feels as if I took advantage of them or does not feel as if they got the right price or value at the end of the day. I don't want that to happen to them. And at the same time, I'm thinking for myself, it has to be a win situation for me. I'm a licensed realtor, licensed contractor, and I also did mortgages for about 15 years in a couple different capacities as a broker as well as a banker. I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back. I'm saying I have some knowledge and experience in quite a few facets of uh, real estate. When someone calls me and asks me to have a second set of eyes on their transaction, I'm using this experience and this knowledge to try to help somebody. However, when I go into a house or any other kind of piece of property, real estate, my investor hat is on first and foremost because that's what I'm in. That's, what, that's the mode that I'm in right now. Not that I'm going to take advantage of somebody or anything else like that, but I'm looking, I guess the bottom line, the question is, I'm asking myself is, where do I get the most bang for my buck with cost and time? If I put a complete new kitchen into this house, for an example, and it's going to be $35,000 because I have to move some of the plumbing, new cabinets, new granite, new floors, new light fixtures, everything's new, and I'm moving it to a different section of the house, and it's going to be $35,000. Am I getting $35,000 back when I go to sell a house? But as an investor, not only do I want $35,000, I want more because there's time invested in that. There's carrying costs and other costs involved. And I'm giving you that as, as, as an example so you know where my mind goes. To make an offer to buy this house from my friends, if, I'm re if I really believe in a win-win deal is the only deal I can do as an investor, the amount of money that I can offer on their house, in my head, it doesn't, it doesn't add up to a win-win situation because the value that I give, which is speed and ease of a transaction, doesn't equal the amount of money that I would have to get as a reduction on this piece of property. So I can't wrap my head around offering them that little. I say that little, but for me as an investor, I have to make things work. We have closing costs, we have carrying costs, we have timing issues and all that. And where, where the house would be in a few years, I have no idea. So I would have a lot of outstanding factors in there. So the offer amount that I could make to these guys doesn't make any sense in my opinion. Let me tell you why I'm coming up with that. It's something that people assign values, I guess based on their personalities and other things that are going on in their life. My value could be different than your value. For instance, I went to Aldi yesterday to get some stuff. And there was a woman that was uh, trying to get $1.29 back for a case of water that she never got. And she had the receipt for it from December. So it was like five months old. And the energy that she, you know, exuded into getting that $1.29 back for $1.29 from five months ago, it didn't make any sense to me. It's not something that I've, I would have assigned a value to. It would have had to be a lot more for me to have to go through that hassle of getting that dollar twenty nine back. However, when I went through the bank, I went to the bank the other day, and uh, the same tellers handle, you know, the consumers coming into the bank as they do the drive through. And as I was looking out. The armored car place was filling the ATM out there. So just had a curiosity. I'm friendly with the tellers. And I said, hey, how much how much you think they keep in that ATM? It's a big ATM. And she said about 250000 250000 <laughs> Now I started thinking about that a little bit. Probably a little bit more than I would have trying to get the dollar twenty nine back. Anyway, I'm giving you an example of people place values on some things. The lady that was bringing back the case of water or getting the dollar twenty nine back it was a high value for her to get that money back. It was, it was more valuable than the money itself. In real estate, the value that I bring to a transaction, one of the values is, first of all, I'm thinking of the seller in a transaction. I'm not trying to get over on anybody. I can't. I can't sleep at night and success will not come my way if I step on people to get ahead in life. I've learned that from experience. So you have that. Then also, I like to under promise and over deliver. So if I'm going to a seller and I say, hey, listen, here's the contract and I can close in 30 days or less and then come to them in 19 days 
and say, hey, listen, we're ready to go. Here's your cash. That makes me feel good. Because there's a value to speed and ease in real estate. If anybody's ever bought or sold a house and you have a contract on it, and then you got the lawyers involved and the realtors involved, and then it goes from 30 days that you were supposed to close to 60 to 90 to now you're on 120 days. And the buyers are, you know, they're not really sure now because they're going to back out because of some kind of a contingency in there, an inspection contingency. I don't know how valuable you think it is, but that's valuable to me for somebody just to come in and do what they say they're going to do and get the transaction done in a timely manner. Maybe that was me just telling you why I'm worth so much money. I don't know. Let me tell you more about this house. So I told my friends that I would, if, if I was them, I would list a house for $399, and I really think that it would sell for $420, just after a few, a few weeks on the market. There's nothing else out there. And I think $399 is a fair price, and you have such a large market of people looking for houses in that, at that price point. They might even go above that, but I don't know. They got three years before they're going to do it, unless they're so tempted to sell at this price point, and then go rent, then they do it now. When I say as is, I mean as is almost. For me, I want to open up the market as big as possible, which means I want to have at least a clean CO when I go to sell a house. So in this particular case, we're going to look at the necessary required uh, repairs that are, that are due on the house so that when homeowners move in, they can move in. If they want to renovate later on, they can, but they can move in as is. It's going to cost a little bit of money. Over at this particular house, there was some plumbing issues in the one bathroom downstairs. You're going to have to get those taken care of. Nobody's going to want to... Well, first of all, you probably couldn't get a CO with those issues. The roof... The roof is up in the air. If you want to repair the roof or replace it, it would probably cost just about as much to replace it. And you'd probably get it back. I'm not sure. But I'm going to say plumbing issues, the roof... I would paint the inside, uh, a lot of the rooms, I would take down some of the wallpaper and paint neutral colors. Uh, curb appeal on the outside, maybe power wash, spruce up the front with some bushes and things like that. I wouldn't get a new furnace, but I would get an HVAC guy over to tune it up. So I'd have him tune up the furnace and give a clean bill of health on that, uh, along with the, uh, the water heater as well. And then also, while I was over there, I suggested possible flooring. When you walk into a house, if your eyes are drawn to the floor and they're all nice and they're flowing nicely, it might have other it might have people overlook some other things. However, one of the nice things about being in a seller's market is buyers are gonna either overlook or they're they're not gonna be so picky because there's no other houses out there. So you don't have to do none of these are mandatory. I'm just suggesting that you look into them and see about either getting them all done or some of them. I'm estimating the cost to be, where do I have this? I have the estimated cost of anywhere between ten to $20,000. Ten to $20,000, what's the reason to spend that kind of money on, on these basic things and then sell it as is? The, you're going to open it up to the biggest market out there. You're going to open it up to a couple that doesn't want to do any renovations immediately upon or before moving in. So you're going to open up that market. You're going to have a CO which is going to make it easier on the, uh, the buyers coming in. It's going to be less headaches for you that if you don't take care of those plumbing issues and some other issues that are just obvious, you're going to have a lot of headaches. So get them out of the way. You're going to have more leverage. When your house has a CO or, or, as it, or at least is capable of getting a certificate of occupancy and you don't have to worry about that, you're going to have a lot of leverage so that when you're accepting offers from people, you can have some leverage. If somebody has a 90-day closing and somebody else has a 30-day, you know, you're going to take the 30-day. If somebody else has some other kind of weird contingency in there, in this market, you're going to be able to say, hey, listen, we're going to take the price that you're offering, 420, hopefully. However, this contingency on inspections, we got to take that out. You can still have inspections on the property for your own peace of mind, but I don't want it in there as a contingency where you can back out of the property. This is all leverage that sellers have in today's market. And last but not least, time. I think with getting this stuff done, you're going to open it up to a bigger market, which is going to have more offers coming in, which means you're going to hand select an offer that's acceptable, not only for price, but other things like timing. 
I know that my friends aren't into a complete rehab, so I'm not even going to go into detail about that because when I ran numbers, you're just not going to get a return on your investment for a complete rehab. Over at my friend's house, ultimately, like I had mentioned to them, if you ever watch HGTV or DIY Network or something and you see these designers walking into a house and they're spending other people's money in order to redesign this house, they're going crazy on these houses. You know, like, we're going to put a uh, accent wall here. We're taking down these walls. We're moving the kitchen from the front of the house to the back of the house. We're adding a fourth bedroom in the backyard by the jacuzzi. I don't know of a lot of practical real estate investors that are doing that. But as a designer, it makes for good TV. On this house that I looked at this morning, my friend's house, you can get crazy on the renovations. When you walk in, you're walking into the kitchen, and someone could say, ultimately, we want to move that kitchen to a different section of the house. They can if they want, but you're not going to get your money back for that. A complete reno cost, I, I'm not even running numbers to, to really see what it would be like. But if you want to move that kitchen and, and update the whole house, possibly even add another bathroom so you have five bedrooms, three bathrooms, redo the whole house inside and out, you're probably talking about sixty dollars to $90,000. Sixty dollars to $90,000, you will get top dollar for that house over there. What's top dollar? Don't know if you're going to get above $500,000 over in that area. You could. You'd have to uh, break that ceiling that's currently over there in that area. But if you got $500,000 and you went all out at ninety, dollars it just doesn't make any sense, not only to me as an investor, but to a homeowner. So what would I do? if I was my friends. And I'm trying to put myself in my friend's uh, situation. So they're not looking to retire for like three years. Plus they have some other dynamics, some family dynamics that's going to probably limit them from moving out of the area to where they want to move to in Pennsylvania. So they can't really, they have to live around here in other words. So taking that into consideration, I might do something like this because you're not in anybody else's situation. You can only see the world through your own eyes. Like, like if I was single, I'm not single, by the way. But if I was single, I might have a big enough house where I have like a little separate wing with a kitchenette and a bathroom and stuff. And then I'd rent the rest of the house, all the rooms out. And I would make buco bucks every month. Eh, I'd rather keep it the way it is right now. But anyway, listen. This is what I would do if I was my friends, possibly. I'd want to feel out the market. Because if the deal was good enough, I bet you they might reconsider and move now move into a rental or something else. So this is what I would do. I'd go and get a HELOC on the house. I'd go a home equity line of credit. I would get the maximum home equity line of credit that I can get. I would use that money, not for frivolous things, I would use that thing, I would use that money for the fix-ups that I talked about, the minimum required fix-ups. So let's even say you put $20,000 in and your house is looking, looking awesome. First of all, if you don't do anything, then you have three years to enjoy the renovations that you put onto your house. It's amazing, I've done this before. Like when I lived in New Mexico, I lived in it and it was outdated and everything. And just before I, I sold, I went through and cleaned the whole place up. I repainted, the curb appeal was beautiful. And I thought to myself, why didn't I do this years ago so I can enjoy it? So I don't think there's any downside to doing the work now. You could either enjoy it now, sell it for a higher price, or it will help when you go to sell it in three years. So I'd get the HELOC. Then I would do this. After I do the HELOC and I do the fix-ups that I had suggested, I might put it on the market on Zillow, for sale by owner, just to feel the market out. Let's say it's three months from now. Premium market, kids are out of school, people are looking to move. What if you put it on for sale by owner, you got the fix-ups in there, and this is what Harry's recommending, $399, and someone comes in with a $450. I don't know if that's gonna happen. But if somebody came in with an offer at four hundred fifty thousand with no contingencies, an extra thirty above what I what I thought it would sell for, would you then consider packing up and going to rent a place until you're ready to retire? I would. If you've watched any of my other previous videos, I'm all about leverage when it comes to money. So. As far as setting up a HELOC and not even using it, let's say, I don't see a downside to that. 
In my friend's particular case, I think they'd have to move some money around in order to get the HELOC, but it could still make sense. I would go out and get the maximum HELOC for the reasons I just mentioned, but then I would also start looking at houses in the area that I was going to. Because you may not want to buy another house right now, but if the deal was good enough, like I just talked about with selling your house, if the going market, if, if the going price over in the, the community that you want to move into is, is 150000 and you have a HELOC in place, and a, and a fabulous deal comes on the market for $100,000, would you buy it? In that particular case, you might. So why not have the accessible money right there for you? And then last but not least, I just want to let you know that, you know, you hold all, all the cards. You're in a really good position. Whether you do fix-ups on the house, don't do fix-ups on the house. This is a seller's market, and no one says where this market's going to, or, or when it's going to turn, or if it's going to turn. But you hold all the, uh, you hold all the cards. I know when you're in the middle of a transaction, like you're going to uh, buy or sell, you feel like so much pressure is on you because you're in the middle of it. But I'm here to tell you from, from an outsider, if you're looking in, you're in a really good position. You don't have to stress about it. Anything else, just reach out.